Welcome back to Market on Close. Let's talk some bonds ahead of the Big Fed week. Joining us, Colin Martin's Director and Fixed Income Strategist at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. All right, Colin, take us through it here. What's the order of events? Uh, if we rank them by importance, we got CPI, we got Fed, we've got dot plots, we've got auctions, we got it all. Uh, we, we do have it all. I feel like we have to rank the Fed meeting as number one, even though we get a few important things along the way. But first and foremost, it's going to be Fed because that's going to tell us a lot about uh, really the direction of, of monetary policy. And given that we're getting updated projections for the next few months, quarters and years, uh, where the CPI report, while likely to be very important, is, is more of a short term reading. If we do focus on tomorrow's CPI report, it, it is going to be widely watched. Uh, inflation is still very important to the Fed right now. They want to make sure that inflation is convincingly moving towards its 2% target. And even though it's moving in the right direction, it's not there quite yet. So any stalls um, could, could spook the market a little bit. And the last thing the Fed wants to do is, is see a reacceleration in, in inflation. So while, while the Fed meeting on Wednesday is the main event, we have to pay attention tomorrow to CPI. We're expecting it to show a trend of, of disinflation. I mean, that's been the trend for the past number of months. We expect that to continue. Uh, any upside surprises, uh, whether tomorrow or for the next few weeks, they're likely to result in, in some a bounce in Treasury yields. Um, but again, it's really more just the appetizer tomorrow for, for the main event or the entree, rather, on Wednesday with the Fed meeting. What did you make of the market's response to payrolls on Friday and the lack of follow through today? Does that give us any insight on the bar that needs to be met for any of these data points to push yields higher? Yeah, the, the bar seems very high right now. And if we look at what what does the path of Fed policy look like, the bar for an additional hike seems very high right now. I mean, that could change, of course, if we see the data change. But for now, it seems like it's less about the potential for another hike and more about how long the Fed will hold at its peak rate. The Fed, Fed officials, Fed Chair Powell, they, they've told us they plan on holding for a while. The market continues to disagree with that. We see four or five rate cuts being priced into the market, uh, rate cuts being priced into the market next year, according to the Fed Fund's futures market. Um, but we expect you know, this week for the, for the Fed to kind of push back on that a little bit. And we're going to be paying attention to the dot plot to see where they see the path of monetary policy going over the next year or two, especially given what still appears to be a relatively strong labor market. Okay. So a strong labor market, uh, strong enough to push back that cut a little bit with March dropping below 50%. Do you think uh, Powell is going to give us any details on whether or not he views his policy as being restrictive? Do you think it's time for him to start defining that term more clearly? Yeah, we're going to be looking to see how he frames that. And there's been a number of Fed officials who, who have stated it that way, that they think the level of monetary policy is restrictive, where Powell's kind of taken a step back a little bit, and he kind of keeps it as an open-ended question. Is it restrictive enough just yet? So that's what we're going to pay attention to, especially now that we're a number of months removed from the last rate hike. I mean, it seems like just yesterday, but July was the last rate hike, so we're four-plus months uh, removed from that. So we'll, we'll be paying attention to not just the dots and the updated projections, but how Powell frames it. And if he makes it seem like we are at a level that is restrictive right now, given that modest shift in tone and perspective, that in and of itself could probably pull down Treasury yields a little bit because the market might interpret that as, as a pivot in future policy. Okay. Great stuff, Colin. Good setup for us. Uh, hit the nail on the head for what we need. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, Colin Martin, Schwab's Center for Financial Research on the potential for bond volatility this week.